Hello, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about hanging a finished wallpaper. So this is a project we had done a few weeks ago, and the first thing we needed to do was to measure out the length of the wall to then establish how long we needed to cut our length of paper. Now, once you've measured it out, um, always add on an extra couple of inches just for your trimming on the tops and the bottoms of the paper. The next task is to measure out where the drops are going to fall on the wall itself. So you do that by using a, a roll of wallpaper that you haven't opened yet and just with a pencil mark it as if you're going to then hang it in those positions. Now what this does is it gives you an indication of where each drop is going to uh, lay on the wall and therefore will give you a good start and finish point so that you've got an even amount of paper of cutting on both left and right as this case is on a feature wall. Now the next task is to check the wallpaper itself. Now the customers have organised getting this paper from Laura Ashley uh, online I believe. Um, so I just want to double check that all the batch numbers are exactly the same and that the um, quality of the paper is good enough for hanging. Now it's important that you check the batch numbers because some of them do um, vary a little bit in the shades. So if you're hanging on one wall as I am here today, you want to make sure that you've got um, the correct paper because as you open up the second or the third row of paper and you'll straight away see that it's not correct so double check that before you start. Now the next task is to um, draw your uh, straight edge your, your, with your spirit level and this is really important that this is bang on straight level especially on a paper that you'll see in a moment that we're hanging here because it is just vertical lines so if it's out a little bit just by a few mils at the start by the time you get to the other end of a large wall those few mils could quite easily have turned into a few inches so spend a bit of time and get that spirit level nice and straight so now we're coming on to the bit where we're going to get the paper out and actually um, start pasting but before you do paste double check the instructions. Even after nearly 15 years of decorating I still read the instructions because each paper varies in the amount of time you have to allow for it to soak. Now this is the bit where most DIYers go wrong because they um, don't allow enough time to soak or they allow too much time and that's when you get the joints to open up or the joints to overlap. So follow the instructions and do as the instructions say and you won't go too far wrong. So I have on my pacing table already marked out in inches um, different measurements. Uh, so I've marked, I've rolled the wallpaper along to the measurement that I want to cut at, remembering to add on those extra couple of inches, and I've cut it, and then just folding it over a couple of times to make sure it doesn't um, flip back when you're pasting. Don't push too hard because it will make an indent in the paper. Um, you'll be surprised that you don't really need to push too hard at all to make it sort of lay out flat. Now I use Sovite paste, it's quite simple, you just again just follow the instructions on the paste, on the box sorry, um, and all you need to do there is mix it up, I think it's five litres per sachet, and then leave it for a few minutes, stir it again, and then you're ready to paste. We're using a fine um, bristle brush to get some nice smooth finishes on the paste itself so we're not left with any lumpy bits and start brushing out away from you. Now this pasting table is a little bit wider than the paper itself so I'm doing one far edge and again making sure I get all the areas, especially the, the edges themselves, pasting in all directions. And then once you've done that far edge, just move it on to the edge closest to you and then continue the process. You need to be careful at this point that you're not flicking it over any customer's furniture or on the carpet or anything, so make sure everything's well covered. And we use plastic sheeting or dust sheets, whichever is more appropriate. In this particular room, everything was completely empty, so it wasn't a problem. So now because we're hanging it, hanging it vertically, we're going to fold it over. It's probably about three quarters of the way up. And I've just noticed a bit of paste on the wall there. Sorry, on the paper itself. So before I fold it over again, I'm just going to get a nice clean sponge that I've got already and just wipe any excess paste off the paper. Now, as I said, this is a Laura Ashley paper, so it's 
it's a good quality paper um, but you do want to be careful that you're not wiping it too hard because some other papers you can actually get the pattern to um, start bleeding out and you, you'll start to get the pattern to run into different colors so just be aware of that and then you finish off pasting the rest of the paper as you have previously and then fold in the remaining bits over as so wiping off again any excess paste and then leaving it for the four to five minutes that this particular paper required rolling it up and putting it out the way somewhere safe ready for you to use in a moment and then I'm just wiping over the table to make sure everything's nice and clean and tidy ready for my next row when basically I'll be doing exactly the same as I just done and I do two lengths at a time so once the paper has had the four to five minutes soaking time required the next stage is actually to put it on the wall now it's worth pointing out at this stage that all the walls have already been fully filled and rubbed down and all the woodwork has already been completely painted so it's now just ready for the finished wall paper itself so using that pencil line that you've already drawn with your spirit level you now just need to match the edge of the paper to that uh, spirit level line itself now I'm using a damp sponge to then brush out the paper and to get out any bubbles uh, and I use a damp sponge on this sort of paper just because I know from experience that sometimes it's quite easy to tear and therefore a damp sponge is a lot um, more delicate and softer way to do it at this stage so I'm starting from the top and I'm brushing it out all the way down constantly making sure that the left edge is um, on the spirit edge that I've already drawn. Now on the right hand side, you can't see it too well in this shot, but I've overlapped onto the other wall by about half an inch or so, and then later on I'll trim that off so I've got a nice straight edge. Never try and match a wall or, or to start a wallpaper directly in a corner of a wall just in case that corner is out of square by a few millimeters. So once I've brushed it all out with the sponge and I'm happy that there's no um, bubbles or anything, I then use a good quality paper hangers brush to then go through and really get it nice and tight into the woodwork and into the corners of the wall and to make sure that there's definitely no bubbles. So the next stage is to then trim the paper. Now some people like to use scissors and pencils and, and such like and I will do on again certain papers but as this is a good quality paper I'm simply using a straight edge and a brand new Stanley blade making sure that you keep replacing the blades because as soon as they go blunt you'll tear the paper so you literally put the straight edge to where you want to cut and using quite a bit of pressure just run your Stanley knife along the top of the paper and it start it will peel off straight away so a nice simple way and then I continue that all the way down the right hand side uh, of the paper as well. So now that the first length's up and I'm happy that that's absolutely level, the process just continues with the second length. The only difference now is rather than trying to get that length of paper matched up to the pencil line, I match it up to the first length that I hung. Now it's at this stage that if you had a pattern, you would make sure that the pattern all matched up. Um, this one's really really simple and it's just a, a straight vertical line with no match at all so I don't need to worry about a pattern and again same process with the sponge double checking that the joints on overlapped and there's not too much gap and brushing it out ready then for the trimming in a moment remembering again not to press too hard in case you get any bleeding in the paper so here we are now actually having a closer shot of the trimming itself so once you've brushed down and you've got out your bubbles then it's going to be a case of the actual trimming so here I am with my nice straight edge with a new blade and you literally just pressing quite firmly pulling the blade along the top of the paper the top of the skirt in and then it comes away with a nice finish. Get your damp sponge again just to wipe off any excess paste off the paper and any excess paste off any skirting boards and door frames. And here we are, the finished product. So it's a Laura Ashley wallpaper and the ceilings had already been painted as had all the woodwork 
uh, the other walls had been lined with a 14 grade lining paper and painted in a Dulux vinyl matte paint. We had the one feature wall on that side and then the same paper around the fireplace on the other side. This is Rob Gardner from Rob Gardner Professional Decorators. If you've got any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.